Hey kids, it's the Missenden Flyer here, hope you're well. Now for some time I've been trying to avoid making this video because I didn't want to teach you how to suck eggs, but uh, it seems that uh, popular demand is such that I really need to make this video now. A number of you have asked me uh, over in fact the last few uh, weeks and months, but particularly the last couple of weeks, how do I keep my bikes looking so clean and spangly? Um, people that come to mind after this are Jay McPhee, Ace Teller, Derveman, uh, just to name three that come to mind, but there are loads of you that have asked me, so thanks very much for your uh, kind implication that I do keep the bikes in good order. I do of course like to look after them. Um, they're expensive things to buy, so uh, you know when I do come to sell them, I want to obviously get the best possible price, and also it's kind of a pride of ownership thing. After we all like to uh, ride something that looks attractive, don't we? Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's not ponder that one too much. Um, so a couple of things I would say before we get into the, uh, into the nitty gritty. First thing is, um, often you see the bikes on my videos here in my man cave, and I've got lots of lighting in here because obviously I do the filming, some of which is halogen and so on, point sources of light. So often, I think some of it might be that the bikes just look good in here because of the lighting. It's a bit like the, um, you know, the effect you get in showrooms. So, you know, they look kind of spangly. Maybe that's because of the lights that are on them. I don't know. But so that's, that's number one. Maybe they don't, they're not actually quite as good as perhaps they always look in the videos. I hope they are. Uh, and then the second thing that I would say is, um, you know, don't get the bike too dirty in the first place. I'm, I'm very lucky. I don't have to commute on my bike or use it every day come uh, wet, you know, whatever the weather. Um, so I tend to only ride my bikes when the weather's okay anyway. Of course, you can get caught out, but um, I tend not to get them very dirty in the first place. If you do that, then, uh, then obviously it's much harder to get them clean. Anyway, stick around, stay tuned for the next few minutes, and I'll tell you all about how I go about cleaning my bikes and the products and tools that I use to do it. Okay, so the first thing that uh, I do when I'm gonna get, start cleaning the bike is get the bike outside, unless you happen to have an indoor washing area, which is very unlikely. Get the bike outside and get the bike vertical. Now, if the bike's got a center stand, like the BMW, stick it on there uh, just to get the bike properly vertical. That way, all the suds and, and everything runs off properly vertical. Gravity does its thing helps you to uh, actually rinse the bike off. If you don't have a centre stand, get the bike either on a paddock stand or an ABBA stand, something like that. Or if you're lazy like me, stick the side stand down, just get a couple of blocks of wood like this and put it under the side stand and get the bike vertical on there. The only thing you've got to do if you're gonna do that is be a bit careful because of course the bike then becomes a lot less stable uh, on the non-stand side, so you could knock the bike over, so just be aware of that. So uh, once that's done, uh, I rinse the bike down with um, a watering can or a, or a gentle hose just thoroughly wet the bike all over just to soften up some of the mud and the grease and grime on there and you find actually that probably 80% of the heavy stuff just rinses away anyway doing that. Once the bike's thoroughly wetted, I then go on to the use of my first product, which is a controversial one actually, it's called Muck Off. You've probably seen it or come across it, it looks like this, pink stuff. Um, and the reason why it's controversial or can be is because it contains quite a lot of salt. And of course salt is uh, one of those things that you probably don't want to be adding to your bike. However, if you're very good about uh, rinsing the bike off afterwards, and I'm a bit anal about that, then I'm pretty sure you get all the salt off. And I find that the good that this does outweighs any potential danger of leaving a salty solution to this on the bike. So spray this all over the bike, leave it for a good 30 seconds to a minute uh, to, to do its thing, and then uh, it's time to agitate it. What I would say about Muck Off, by the way, and there are other things, um, other brands similar to this around, is it is quite expensive. So one thing I do to get the cost down, because I do wash my bikes quite a lot, as you've probably gathered, is uh, buy this in bulk. In fact, I buy it in, uh, in these big, in these big um, tubs mail order, brings the price right down. So that's Muck Off. Um, so yeah, spray the bike all over with the muck, muck off, leave it for a, a minute or two, and then agitate it when you rinse that off with a, um, again, with a hose pipe or a watering can. Uh, rinse that off and agitate it with one of these. I call this a bug shifter. It's just basically a sponge in a, in a string net that gives it a bit of extra friction, but doesn't damage the surface of the bike. Any stubborn bits, just give it a little rub with that. Not going too mad, because of course what you don't want to do is damage the paintwork. So just agitate it with that as you rinse off the, off the muck off. So that's stage one of my cleaning regime. Okay, the next stage of my cleaning regime is uh, the cleaning stage proper, if you like. Now, depending on how righteous I'm feeling, I might be doing a particularly thorough job, and I may use the jet wash if the bike's particularly cruddy, if it's the dirt bike, for example, and there's a lot of real heavy ingrained dirt, then I may use the jet wash on the bike. Uh, if you use that, usual rules apply. You've got to be careful. Make sure you don't apply it to any seals, any area that are, you know, should be lubricated, greasy stuff, uh, and be very careful with the decals because you can bring those off as well with those jet washes. So if you're careful of those things, no reason why you can't use the jet wash. It does a really thorough job of reaching those parts that are really difficult to get to. So sometimes I do that. The other thing I sometimes do, if I've got lots of time on my hands, is, uh, is give the uh, bike a coat of snow foam. Now, I don't know if you've seen this before, but again, it's something that you can buy. It's an attachment, basically, that you put onto your jet wash. You use an attachment that looks a bit like this. In fact, exactly like this in my case. Uh, and you fill this up with snow foam that, again, you buy in bulk for cheapness. This is the one I use. It's a car product. I also use it on my cars. You fill it up, you put it on your jet wash, uh, and then you spray the bike with that. And a, and a bit like with the... Um, 
with the muck off, you just leave it and agitate it for a period of time. And again, it just gets in all the nooks and crannies and does a really thorough job of cleaning. Uh, so those are optional things if I'm going for the gold version of my clean. Uh, and then of course you rinse that all off again. Um, so you're back to just a wet bike. So now you're into the proper cleaning stage of the bike, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Now what I do is I use something that's commonly known as the two bucket method. No surprises, it uses two buckets. Here we have two buckets. One marked suds and one marked rinse. And the reason that I mark them like that is because it's quite easy to forget which bucket you're using for what when you're doing this. So the one marked suds, obviously, you put your cleaning product in. Uh, and in my case, what I use is something called Meguiar's Gold Class Shampoo. Comes in a box or a bottle like this. Again, the more you buy of it, the cheaper it gets. Quite an expensive product. Used to only be able to get this mail order, but now you can get it from Halfords. But really recommend that. Not an advert, by the way. Uh, but Meguiar's Gold Class, really good, nice and gentle. Um, rinses off nicely, foams up really well, and also smells quite nice. So stick that in the suds bucket. Um, using a really good quality uh, wash mitts, again, something like this, and make sure that you replace these regularly so they don't get all scummy, uh, you wash the surfaces of the bike. Um, um, and of course you'll see all the dirt running off and it does a really good job, that Meguiar's. Um, once you've done that, and again you may need to use the bug shifter or some brushes as well to get into the nooks and crannies, once you've done that, another rinse with the, with the hose or watering can, not necessary to use a jet wash, just make sure the stuff's all rinsed off. Uh, and then in order to start the drying process, what I do is I use um, chamois or towels or microfiber cloths or a mix of all three to start to dry the bike off. Now when I say towels, I mean this sort of waffle effect towel. Again, buy them frequently, they don't cost a lot of money um, because it's crucial that you're using clean stuff. What you don't want to do is get scratches on the bike. The reason why you use the two bucket method, uh, which I didn't fully explain, um, is that uh, you only ever put the suddy um, sponge into the rinse bucket to rinse off once you've used it and then once it's rinsed out and clean you can then put it back into the suds bucket uh, before you then use it the next time and the idea is all the dirt then ends up in the rinse bucket and not back in the suds bucket and that stops you getting those really fine um, little marks on your bike swells and so on which over time will just spoil the um, spoil the effect and the paint finish on the bike. So be, be quite careful about making sure you're using good quality cloths, change them regularly. You can wash them of course, but I find actually a couple of washes and then it's time for a change. So over it with the Meguiar's um, and then the drying regime using the waffle cloth, towels, and I also use, um, once uh, the majority of the water is off, I start to use um, microfiber towels. Again, buy them in bulk for cheapness. I buy them in these 36 packs. I get these from Costco. Can't remember how much they are. They're not very expensive, but uh, you get loads of them in there. Well, well worth the money and brilliant for drying the bike. Uh, once that's done, usually I bring the bike indoors and then it's on to the final um, stage of the drying process. Okay, so the final stage of the drying process then. Again, this is optional, but it's something that I found to be really beneficial with my bikes. I use one of these things. This is a, is a, a bike dryer. Uh, you may have seen these. I got this um, from Amazon. Uh, this particular one is called a uh, Turbo Blaster 1000. I think it was a, it's got something like a 2HP engine or something in it, or motor, electric motor. And what it is, it's a very, very powerful hair dryer, basically. It really does blow out a hell of a blast of air, gets right in the nooks and crannies. The great thing with this one is it's got an adjustable heater as well. So not only is it blowing out straight uh, you know, really forceful air, but warm air as well. So uh, great in the winter, keeps you warm as well as uh, does a good job of drying the bikes. Um, you'll find that when you use them, uh, that you need to start sort of at the top of the bike and work your way down. Otherwise, you'll find yourself drying the bike at the bottom. You'll blow something at the top and it'll blow a load of uh, a load of water all over the bit you've already dried. So um, so that can be frustrating. But you'll quickly learn on your bikes which bits are the hard bits to get at and so on. But fantastic to use, particularly things like radiators. You'll be amazed at the amount of moisture that you can get out and get right into the engine as well uh, and, and does a top job of drying those out. So thoroughly recommend those. Again, really expensive, actually. I think this one cost me about £130. So, um, so quite, quite an investment. But, uh, you know, if you're washing your bikes a lot like I am, then I think absolutely worth it. Um, I think there are probably cheaper options. I think you can get um, pet dryers that are very similar. I don't know if they're the same power, but they look very similar. And they're about 50 quid. So it might be worth going there if you don't want to splash out quite that much on a bike dryer. Okay, so there we have it. That's my uh, complete bike cleaning regime. Uh, one other thing that I do uh, sometimes do, or twice a year in the winter per bike, is add um, a protective coating of ACF 50. Uh, I've shown you this before. I, I use it in these uh, 
come in these little bottles. Again, I buy them in bulk because it's quite expensive stuff. Uh, spray this on the bike once the bike's nice and clean, bring it indoors and do that. I've got a video on how you do that. I'll put a link on this video. Um, and that just makes sure that uh, if I do get caught out and I do get in uh, heavy rain and on those greasy, salty roads, then the bike is prote protected from corrosion. So that's another optional thing. As I say, I tend to do that twice a year through the winter on each bike just to make sure they're optimally protected. And it really does pay dividends. On the bikes that I've had for some years, all the fasteners are still looking nice and shiny. So uh, I think it's worth doing. Okay, so there we have it. That's my cleaning regime for the bikes. Um, as I say, lots of you have asked for that. Uh, there's no magic to it. It's just kind of common sense and experience over the years of cleaning lots of bikes and cars is how I've got to that stage. Thoroughly recommend to you uh, getting the bike dryer. Brilliant thing. Great for labour saving. And also the two bucket method. That way you keep your, uh, you keep your paint nice and protected. Okay, hope that's been of some interest to you. Look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.